applied research, as you all saw. The R&D is not left at the shelves of a university acad uh, library or academic classes. It's right there amidst the people. And more importantly, it's revitalizing what was very much part and parcel of our being with thousands of years of history. What we saw today, Thamara's lunch, I think ever since I opened my eyes with presence of mind, I have seen a copper vessel in my own house and I've been drinking from, from that copper vessel. I don't know what scientific research would say, but yes, I think I've been getting very, very little disease <laughs> incidence, particularly the waterborne. Maybe it has that built in, uh, uh, you know, qualities which we are unconsciously adopting. It's a pity that today we have to re-emphasize and re-float, relaunch that same age-old tradition which has been proven with years of experience and good results. Yet, it is the need of the hour that at least we start using it for the benefit and before the future generation forgets about it totally, we need to put it in a way, as our uh, uh, Vice Chancellor said, as a fashion statement, as a, as a thing which is, it's a brand, it's a, it's a thing to be proud of. It's a very good model that has been adopted to popularize it, not through another set of subsidies, government scheme that will distribute 111 tamras in every BPL family. It doesn't work unless you have people's participation and their commitment with the awareness that it's going to do them good, the model of development does not work, whether rural or urban. As a health secretary, day in, day out, I'm bogged by the statistics that is bombarded to me with number of waterborne diseases. Many of the children, particularly diarrhea, and we find most of the children landing up in the hospitals because of lack of safe drinking water. Government is spending thousands of crores in providing water, safe water maybe, whether it is through the rural development or the urban development water supply schemes. But as was pointed out by Dr. Padma, that between the scheme outlet and your house and your actual consumption, there is a space that only you as a consumer can handle and therefore if you as a consumer are not aware of what is missing and what can be improved upon it won't work even if a copper vessel is placed in your household free of cost or whatever subsidized cost you would not know the significance of that and therefore you will not be using it and therefore the outcomes again will be seen in the numbers increasing in the hospitals. As per the World Health Organization's estimates, one third of the income of an average household is being spent on diseases management. What has been just mentioned with the statistics of uh, Dr. Padma, 3,000 to 5,000 if you are spending on one disease incidence event in your family, this is only 1,500. But when it comes to that, do we, do we take that wise decision? So another innovation comes, as uh, Mr. Madan said, we go in for kind of an EMI. So it, it should not pinch, but at the same time you start using, so small, small, small installments. To add to it, our SHG innovation. There are 1,50,000 SHGs in Karnataka alone. I have been secretary of women and child and I remember how beautiful this, this particular institution is, how women in each village have at least four to five such self-help groups empowered both economically and socially to do something for themselves first and then for the community and the family of course. Do you know 
an amount of 6,000 crore is what they have got in their deposits as just thrift uh, saving uh, groups. And what lacks in further development of this potentially very high um, social enterprise in the waiting is that they do not have business ideas. If this can be one of the activity where women can make it you know, available in the entire village and collect, you know, just as they collect the savings, they collect the money in installments, in no time, I'm sure, we can, we can have copper vessel, tamras in every household, at least in Karnataka. And then, of course, worldwide, why not? And for this, you don't need budgets. You don't need to wait for sanctions and approvals and bank loans and things like that. It's something that is within us. So just as the traditional knowledge is within us, we just are channelizing it into the right, uh, uh, right way and make it socially useful. Similarly, this is a social uh, resource that we have within us. I think with this strategy of right from SAG, SAGs are in urban areas also, using women's self-help groups, making them aware, providing this material on a commercial scale, giving them the right kind of training, and then uh, ensuring that it is evaluated that over a period, whether it is waterborne disease or micronutrient deficiency, anemia as we talk about. And these days the wellness diseases like indigestion because we eat too much, we eat all that we don't, should not eat or we have diabetes because we do not control our sugar and so on. I am sure with that evaluative thing, the kind of money that we are spending otherwise through various government schemes can be saved as well. So not only our health indicators improve, but also the public money, ultimately it's the public money. And today, just one example I would give and close at that, our VC talked about the anemia issue. Today, I think we spend about 50 crores to give iron folic acid tablets to pregnant women. And we also give weekly uh, iron uh, tablets to our children, about 1.5 crore children in uh, schools and uh, in schools. But what happens? They don't like the tablet, particularly the pregnant women. They don't take it. So I'm spending it with no results being shown there. The acceptability and the absence of after effects, adverse after effects are very, very important which unfortunately in the present allopathy regime we take for immediate benefits but then we do not know what adverse effects are we going to land up with. Therefore, I for one, in person, is a strong and a strong uh, uh, proponent of using our natural remedies, natural ways of living and uh, propagating them for the well-being of one and all and these are, this is one. And another thing that we are very soon embarking upon is on the anti-malaria or malaria repellent, mosquito repellent uh, products which uh, uh, would, would ensure that my chikungunya and dengue and all these malaria deaths and all that, that will come down substantially. So with very small intervention jointly with TTU and Government of uh, Karnataka, which includes other departments, not just health department. And all the functionaries who are there, field functionaries, I have about 40,000 ASHA workers. Similarly, we have panchayat uh, uh, and officers and then, I mean, lakhs of them. If we all put our hands together, take it up to ourselves to, to make people aware of the opportunities that are available to remedy and prevent these kind of health failures and improve our health indicators, I'm sure India and Karnataka in particular would be a role model for the whole world to look up to and TDU should get the ground. Once again, congratulations to the entire team and Nimai Sajjige Visheshwarinta on the Subhashikadu.
ಉತ್ತಮವಾಗಿ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಹಳ್ಳಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನು ಅಳವಡಿಸಿ ಉಳಿದವರಿಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಮಾದರಿ ಆಗಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹಾರಿಸುತ್ತ ನನ್ನ ಎರಡು ಮಾತನ್ನು ಕೊನೆಗೊಳಿಸ್ತೀನಿ an address that was so from the heart and not a read out speech was evident laudable initiatives and ideas particularly involving the sg to actually market tamras and how that can really be taken on thank you so much uh, dr shalini rajneesh for your address and and infusing such energy and also evidence